Are you yearning to wake up each morning and ignite a new meaning and purpose in life and beyond? Welcome, everyone. I'm Michael McGinnis, an award-winning author, speaker, and educator on human potential, and your host on You Can Do It, inspiring growth, igniting potential. Life presents us with challenges that serve as catalysts for growth. The pivotal question is, how do we respond to these challenges, or better yet, opportunities? Do we adopt a victim mindset or rise to become victors? Our goal here is to guide and inspire you to master the most amazing journey you have your life you can do it starts now hey good morning everybody michael mcginnis here with you can do it and last time you had met heather and we're going to be continuing this series we talked about with respect to retirement powerful topic you know and that's the kind of thing that hopefully in that last uh, podcast you saw really overviewed some of the challenges well today we're going to zoom in on that and talk about a couple of frameworks that'll help you through these transitions uh, because once you really sort of understand what's going to happen and what's likely to happen you can better plan for it and better accommodate those changes so, of course, I put together this framework that you can see here, you know, showing symbolizing the tree as the phases of growth. Well, the amazing thing is, is, is that as all this work that I've done throughout my whole life and career and research into this whole framework and mastered a lot of those elements myself, you know, and applying them. Well, it's interesting as you come to this sort of phase in life, you know, we'll label it retirement. I found that I had to start all over again, right? And I was back at personal growth and I was really trying to start considering, you know, with all the self-esteem and everything I worked again, I said I had to do that again, right? With myself, my images changing and everything else, I sort of had to look at my self-esteem, self-image and the changes that were accommodating. And then self-discovery, again, who am I again? Who am I now? You know, I, I used to have my identity wrapped around, you know, what I did and now some of these things are gone who am I now? And in enlightenment, even more powerful because we're closer now to that finish line, right? As, as the best way to say it is, is be direct, right? This is our mortality is around the corner, a little bit closer than it ever was. And so enlightenment becomes even a more important kind of conversation as we begin to contemplate really what is life about and what is this ending thing called death about? Uh, and so we can better be prepared for these transitions. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in. We're going to introduce a couple of frameworks. But first, Heather, say hi. Hello, everybody. Happy to be here. Happy to be here with you, Michael. Yeah, it's and great, great to have her for, back. Yeah. Thank you. And it's great. And she'll be talking about a framework as well. Uh, and the, the challenge is, is, right, each one of these frameworks and topics can be a whole discussion in itself. So we're going to provide enough information about it to begin to give you some guidelines. And that way, at least you'll be able to start researching these things on your own and start considering them. And the first one is that we're approaching change. And what does that mean? Well, the beautiful part is, is there's a process of change. We apply that in the corporate and company sector, good companies who really want to work their employees through these major transitions will apply, apply these models. Well, as you can see here, William Bridges is, is an outstanding individual and researcher, and he's pulled together his model, as you can see here, and it applies so much to personal change. And as you can see, there are three stages. And as we come to approach this phase in life, as with any major change in life, whether it's a divorce you're going through a life, a change in a change in relationship, change in job, anything that's somewhat major to us, and of course, this entering into the phase of retirement becomes a major change. And so having a good understanding of what change looks like is really key. The first stage of change, as you see, results or starts with an ending, 
right, is that the old approach, what we were in a case of retirement, you know, it really alludes to the fact is is what we used to have, our identity, our job, uh, and our raising family and, and sort of mainstream and how we lived it and accommodated it and all the things that we did at that time. You know, some are still there, but there's a lot of changes being introduced into that. And I'll t- talk about that. Ending really represents the losses that we experience. We'll be talking about that a little bit more. Then there's transitions. And the transitions, and Heather's really going to drill in this, that's going to relate to the emotional aspect of change. We're referencing the Kubler-Ross model, the grief and loss model of change. And you'll see that there really is a series of emotions in how they really play out in this change. And therefore, we can better understand, you know, why are we feeling shock, denial, anger, and so on and so forth. And Heather will be covering that more in depth. And depending upon how well we move through the ending stage, experiencing and dealing with the losses, and the transition, now what do I do? Now what is life all about? We're sort of, again, that self-discovery phase. We've got to start thinking about redefining ourselves, and that's that transition. What do we really want to do with this phase in life? And then, depending upon how well you do in those segments, is the acceptance stage. And that's where you come to grips. You, you're you done fighting, you realize, ah, I don't want to age, stop the aging, stop this look, stop the changes, stop all of these elements up here, but it doesn't, right? Life has a way of going on. And so we're the ones that really have to adapt and be able to deal with these changes. And that's the beautiful part of it, is, is that through doing well with the stages of change, you can move into acceptance. And that's where a whole new life begins. But it's a process of getting there. So let me turn that over to Heather, who's going to talk about the grief and loss model, the transition part of the change. Heather? Yeah, thanks, Michael. So, you know, while Elizabeth Kubler-Ross created this model in her studies of death and dying, you know, as people go through this grief process, what are they experiencing? What are they dealing with? And while she created it for that space, it really applies to any significant changes that we're going through in life, you know, including retirement. And I've even seen um, people use this and, and retitle it the change cycle. Because if you stop and think about the emotions, as you said, Michael, that we go through in a significant change. If you refer to this grief cycle, um, you know, picture and see that process, you can probably relate each of these steps into those big changes. That denial, going into anger, bargaining with yourself where you're, you know, feeling that overwhelm and helplessness. And then even sometimes depression, just getting, you're so low, you're like, I just don't even know what to do. And being aware of those emotional states helps us work through them and actually get to that acceptance state that that you uh, mentioned earlier. So again, while Elizabeth Kubler-Ross created this for the death and dying uh, phase of life, whether it's ourselves or loved ones, it really applies to all of the cha- those big changes that we're going through in our life and how we can better deal with them. Well, well said. And again, there's so much that could be shared on this, right, Heather? I mean, there's yeah. <laughs> these emotions are tough. It's It's that tough transition that you're working through. And and what it really means is, is that you've got to learn to get comfortable with these emotions and how to deal with them in a healthy way. Yeah, that's a great point, Michael. You know, we can, a lot of times when we start to feel maybe that anger, denial, or even hitting the bottom of that curve with that bargaining where we, we feel helpless and we don't know what to do, we can tend to want to bury that. I don't, I don't want to feel like this. I want to keep going on with, you know, especially in retirement. I want to keep the feelings that I had going on in my life. I want that happiness. Where is it? I can't really be feeling this way. And I don't, 
I don't want to let that stuff come up. So we bury it and we deal with it internally until we can't anymore. That's one of the things I really like to help with my coaching clients is, is helping them dig into why they're feeling like that and how we can flip the switch and get them to that acceptance and moving forward into enjoying this phase of their life. Uh, thanks, Heather. And I'm so glad that you're offering your services as a coach in this regard. And, and I hope people, you know, understand that and reach out. It's, 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 it's a tough step for people mm -hmm. to pursue help. Right. And but when they do, uh, as I did, and I had to talk about that, you know, but when when I do, when I reach this stage, there were some major changes. And it's always good to have the guidance and help of others that can really help you through these phases. So I'm, I'm glad you're offering those services. And yeah. so let's apply this. You know, I'm an authentic person and I'm going to share reality. What, what did this really look like and mean to me? Again, everybody's going to experience different. There'll be some similarities and yet there'll be differences because it all depends about what our losses are. Uh, and so for me, I had a great career. You know, I was just at work, the last job, 15 years, a great company, I had this great title. You know, I really won national awards. And at 61, or they had offered an early retirement package for those of us over 60. And yeah, I thought, hey, you know, this is the best time to be able to pursue it. It was not about retirement. I was going to continue the job. I went out there and I started looking for jobs. Why was nothing happening? And along with all my colleagues, because the early retirement is for those 60 and over, and we really stayed connected. And we started to understand, why is this happening? Only to discover the ageism was now playing a factor. And so one of the losses experienced is, is that, hey, I'm ready to go, this and that, but we're not as much wanted anymore, particularly in corporate America as we age and get older. And that was a real tough pill to swallow. Well, I still needed to make income. What am I going to do? Right? So that was a real traumatic shift. And along with that is, is that how do we introduce ourselves in lives? You know, we meet other people. Very the first question we often get asked is, is so what do you do? And I can remember how embarrassed I felt at first, because what am I saying? What am I? I don't even know. I used to have this fancy title. I used to have thing to say, and I didn't have it anymore. You know, and in addition to that, Dr. Riley Moynes talks about stage two, the stages of retirement, and he has them as the three D's uh, and their decline, divorce and depression. Well, I experienced all three of those, right? You know, and that was my own experience before I started to read his research to realize about that. But I divorced after 20 years, right? That happens. All of a sudden, you're living together 24-7, you know, and it's, it changes the whole model and framework. And there's pursuit of different, different, uh, different interests at this point. And so the, on top of the job now was this, my personal relationship changing as well. Financial, well, not only from the divorce, but income levels changed substantially, right? You know, now if I was not gonna be able to go and work at the level of which I was used to be working financially, how am I gonna adjust that? What am I going to do? And, uh, and along with that was an empty nest. Now, I got married later in life. And so now on top of everything, this very challenging time called empty nest is where the children begin to start leaving the nest. And all of a sudden, wait, I'm looking at the four walls. Who, who am I? What, what am I gonna do? I, I was used to being a great dad. I love that, that identity and things are starting to change. So I'll be the first to admit is, is it was tough. And all of those emotions that Heather talked about, I experienced all the way down to depression. And that's when I realized I needed the help of a counselor who helped me to really be able to work through those stages. As much as I knew them, it was really important to me still to get the support of others, to keep me honest and to challenge myself as I went through those stages. Heather, what are your thoughts on losses? Yeah, you know, any any loss can be challenging. And I think you're hitting on some that we don't necessarily prepare ourselves for these. Right? We have a vision of what our life is going to look like, whether it be while we're in, you know, the working phase of our life or raising families. And we probably also have that vision of, 
you know, what's it going to look like when I retire? And it's probably some dreamy <laughs> getting to do all the things that I don't have time to do now while I'm raising my family and working and whatnot. And so we don't think about the things we're going to lose. We don't think about, I'm going to lose my, as some people refer to it, my work family, those people that you see every day and you spend so you, sometimes you spend more hours with them than they do than you do your own family at least your waking hours anyway you know so it's losing that social interaction um you know it might be losing as you said your identity that's very tied to what you do in the workplace um, it might be, well, you even hit on it a lot, like loss of a paycheck, loss of that income, whether you need it or not, even if you don't need that income in that particular phase of your life, no longer having that commit, it's a loss. It's something different in your regular routine in your regular, you know, scope of, of work for your week. <laughs> you know, you're not getting that paycheck. You're doing things different with your finances. Um, you don't have an article work. too, Heather, right? I mean, the, you, yeah, you shared an article on that. And I think you even have an image that might be shared right now is his. Uh, yes. you know, yeah. Is that includes some of that? It does. Know. Yes. It's a, it's a great Forbes article and, and they hit right on those specific things that, that people go through when they retire. Again, that loss of identity, change in daily routine, the decrease in social interactions, um, having less mental stimulus and physical activity. There's a certain level of, um, you know, how much we're using our mental capacity and also physical movement and just getting up and going to work every day. That now we might find, you know, if you wear a tracker, like I usually do, um, you might find that as you're sitting at home, instead of getting your 5,000 normal steps a day, now you're getting like 500. Because <laughs> instead of getting up and going to work, you know, you're getting up and having your coffee and reading the paper and just chilling out and doing whatever. And so your your physical activity can go down. And these just have effects down the road. Um, but yeah, just those losses that, again, we don't really think about them when we go into this new phase of life, when we when we have this significant change. And I think, you know, being prepared for those things, thinking about what exists or what existed, right? If you're in, if you've already retired and now you're in that phase of like, what's going on in my life? Where am I? Who am I? I got to figure stuff out. Looking back and asking yourself, what kind of things did I have in place before that motivated me, made me feel good, that I looked forward to? And how do you begin to replace those in your current state of life? Uh, thank you, Heather, for, for sharing that too. And, and it sort of brings into the topic is, is, okay, there is this phase, there are elements that we have. And, and I think too, we talked about it in the last podcast is that our perception of retirement is this grand time without working. And, you know, and at first it is that way. There's that honeymoon period. Dr. Riley Moines refers to it as is where it's great not having to work. And we really enjoy that. But because we're humans and at the center of us is still this need for meaning and purpose, you know, comes these stages as he refers to it and trying to figure that out. And I know for myself, I, I commented on counseling uh, and, and it, it takes a lot of courage to be able to admit you're having a tough time. Uh, and I really encourage others uh, to recognize, as we just talked about in these models, to utilize those models and to sort of think through where you are. I actually hung up the stages of change and the model of grief and loss. And I'd look at that item on my refrigerator and it would remind me during the day of which, God, no wonder I, I'm cutting people off in traffic, whatever. I'm really upset. I, mean, I feel anger. You know, what's that all about? And then it helped me sort of track it back and say, of course it is because I'm going through major change. 
And that's what sort of prompted me to sort of get into counseling and coaching, do that. And I encourage that to touch base with you. Describe, you know, sort of what, what you do in cases like this where people are coming in and recognize that they're struggling. Mm -hmm. Um, So I actually use a a very powerful tool. It's called an energy leadership index assessment. And the reason that I like to use it with my clients is it gives an, an unbiased look at where their energy is at and what is draining their energy. Because if you think about all of these stages in that change cycle, right? Our, our energy is somewhere, whether usually it's very negative or catabolic, as I call it. And, and that negative energy is just dragging us down. But this assessment helps us identify what is it? You know, is it our, our social interactions or the lack thereof? Is it a financial situation? Is it our family situation? Is it our, we're worrying about our health? So it has a, a number of categories and we can really dig into those. And, and that brings about a lot of awareness about what is happening in our life, even if we're not quite there ourselves yet. Right. We, we know something's going on, but we need we need something kind of concrete to, to help us help guide us through that process. And so that's usually what I start out with with my clients. And then it's it's allowing the client to say, you know, I really need help in this particular area. I can see that. And then we dig in. And it can be anywhere from just helping them work through that particular change. Um, And then hopefully getting to the point where we are looking at their future and starting to plan out what they want it to look like and what kind of things that they might need to um, do, other changes they might need to make in their life to get to a place they're they're enjoying. That's great. And, And I think that it's setting the stage, right, for this whole new phase of life. Or you had talked about, I think, last time, this could be, 30 years of our life, a third of our life. And we don't just experience the changes, you know, when we first retire, it's throughout the whole process. You know, there's this one uh, sort of uh, model that uh, uh, sort of shows a sort of three phases. There's the go-go years, the very active years, and then you move into the go-slow years, which is where Mm -hmm. health and mobility issues begin to settle in and as a result you're not as active anymore and then eventually there's the no-go years which is where you're much more limited and and this is very often associated with the loss of independence and nursing homes or other decisions that get made at this point through there and every one of those you know, are major changes as well. But the secret, you know, that I've seen with others and I'm experienced myself, this is even I'm one of the early phases, you know, is the fact that you come to understand what's happening. And once you reach that stage of acceptance, then you can better be able to start planning and considering for those things too. So now I'm already starting to think about is, is okay, what am I going to be doing in the years that become the go slow years. So let me start planning on that now rather than thinking that I'm just going to be in the go go years until I end. Well, some people are, but very few, right? And so it's a kind of thing that just to be able to prepare as well as how about the no go years? Really traumatic for some as they begin to lose their independence. And so beginning to be able to start identifying and understanding the kinds of losses you'll experience. You know, throughout, and of course, ultimately is a major loss. Is it's in this phase that we confront our mortality, and oh no, here's that topic, right? People want to avoid it, but on the other hand, it's a real healthy topic to really to confront, to start understanding what it's about. I was fortunate in my years to have volunteered in hospice care, children's oncology camp, on ambulance as an emergency medical technician that allowed me to confront death. And through that experience, it helped me to be much more open to it. And now today, we're much more comfortable in talking about it. Well, that's another topic we really need to be able to talk about more. This is our mortality. But in the context of a society that doesn't like to talk about that. So we often have to find other ways. Any thoughts, Heather? Yeah. 
you know, I, I love the way that it, you break it down into the go years, the the slower years, and then the no go years. And it, it makes me think of, you know, my key foundations in my transitions coaching where, you know, and we, we've mentioned it multiple times, that awareness, where are you at today? And then being aware of there are, there's the following phases. You know, if you are in that, that go, go stage and you're like, well, this is where I am and I'm just going to enjoy it. And let's, let's just keep going. I don't want to think about, I don't want to think about that third stage yet. Maybe not at all. You, you know, you're put, just keep putting it off, but having that awareness, not only where we are at, but also that those next stages are coming up allows us to then have that conscious choice. And as you, you kind of hit on it, what do I want that to look like? Do I want my slower years to be like sitting around doing absolutely nothing? <laughs> or, you know, do I want my no-go years to be long? Or do I want to make them as, you know, short as possible? Meaning I want to be, you know, have vitality and energy for as long as I can. You know, so that, that, I started, you know, we're at the near the end and I just yeah. want to conclude because you just hit on a great point to really to, to end on. And, and again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for being a part of this. And, you know, you can do what is all about achieving your full potential. Right, a, a, a inspire growth, ignite potential. Well, guess what? You know, that's the opportunity here is within this phase is the opportunity to really to achieve your potential. We'll talk about Maslow's hierarchy and, and on top of it is self-actualization. And this is your chance to really to achieve this in this life and to feel good about it. And I know from volunteer and hospice care how important that is, particularly to those who are on the way out. So what's beautiful about this, and that's why I use that phrase, it's not about getting older. Add the word be in front of it and say it's about getting bolder, right? Rather than succumbing and developing this attitude of negativity and decline and and all the sadness and grieving and things that are in there, this is your chance to live the rest of your productive life. You know, and in a way that's focusing on and achieving a potential. Well, we'll be coming back and we'll be talking more about how to do things like that. What are some options? What are some things to do? And again, I definitely encourage you to look at the work of Dr. Riley Moynes, uh, whose who's, uh, work is out there on YouTube and a number of other social media sites. So again, thank you everybody for joining in on You Can Do It. Thanks, Heather, for being there. And again, if this is relating to you and impact to you, strongly encourage that you touch base with either you see her website here under her image and it's a kind of a thing that help is strength it's been the story of my life i would not be here if i did not walk on the shoulders of other giants right there's that expression and those are the other people that cared enough to help me and that i made use of those resources to continue to propel me forward so that I can keep moving forward. So again, thank you everybody. By the way, I don't say this enough, but I truly want to thank our producer for the tremendous work that she's doing. Emily is awesome. Uh, it's fantastic. And she the, does the magic of pulling these whole sessions together. Thanks everybody. Thanks Heather. Thank you. I'm Michael McGinnis, and you've been listening to You Can Do It, inspiring growth, igniting potential. Tune in every second and fourth Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time on Transformation Talk Radio. As a recognized educator, author, and speaker on human potential, let's learn together how to make the most out of this life and to put a ding in your universe. This is the incredible journey of personal and spiritual growth, self-discovery, and enlightenment. For more information, visit growhumanpotential.com.